And now a reading from the book of Romans, chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. But not only that, we even take pride in our problems, because we know that trouble produces endurance. Endurance produces character, and character produces hope. This hope doesn't put us to shame, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Hi, my name is Sweetly, and I'm a senior here at Pascal High School here in Fort Worth. University Christian Church has been a cornerstone in my life since about the time I started walking. I stand here today as a senior in high school who remembers vividly playing in the sand pit at weekday school when I was about three. From my VBS days, to Journeyland classes, to middle school mission trips, and even a tour of England with the handbell choir, I have been here for this church, and it has certainly been here for me. I have made memories with some of my closest friends, been supported by genuine, loving mentors, and been taught to lead by incredibly aspirational leaders. If I had a dollar for every time I've come running through those front doors late to handbells, youth groups, or some sort of committee meeting, Let's just say I'd be pretty rich. Needless to say, this church and its congregation have always been a comfortable place for me. My journey of faith, on the other hand, has not necessarily been so comfortable. I'll start by saying I'm the type of person who truly thrives on a busy life. Those who know me well know that I am happiest when busiest, even if it warrants stress. I truly apologize to my poor mom, who thought she would finally have a break from driving her kids around when I got my license. Little did she know, I'd be way too busy driving myself around to even bother with the schedules of my brother and sister. Sorry, Mom. In the midst of trying to balance work, school, sports, a social life, and even the laundry list of church activities I take part in, I often find it difficult to find time to slow down and find time for God. The truth is that I know many of you face the same reality. In the constant go, go, go society that we live in, few of us actually make time to slow down, take a breath, and be spiritual. I have a very type A habit of making to-do lists when I get busy. My to-do list is constantly filled with homework, chores, errands, and even walking the dog, but almost never a read your Bible or pray for a few minutes. My relationship with God seems to fall pretty low on my list of priorities as I constantly find myself thinking, I'll make time for that later. At the end of the day, I'm ashamed to say that I feel as if my busy, activity-filled teenage life has almost led to a lack of spiritual growth. Each year, however, I go to church camp at Disciples Crossing for a full week of the summer, and it serves as a complete escape from the fast-paced lifestyle that I live here in Fort Worth. No phones, no work, no places to be, just time to hang out with my friends and dig deeper into my faith. And for those of you who are wondering, no, I don't miss my phone during that week. I know, crazy. This relaxing time spent surrounded by nature is always a wake-up call. I find that when I am sitting in the grass watching the steam rise off the lake during morning watch, it is much easier to reconnect with God. But as I'm sitting there in silence, really just thinking, I begin to let my curiosity take hold. This is where the uncomfortableness of my journey of faith begins. This is when I truly realize how many deep questions I've neglected to ask myself over the years. Amidst the chaos of my fast-paced lifestyle, I have shoved down many big questions, theological, philosophical, things to ask God, and even things about God to ask myself. See, it's, it's much easier to never address these holes, gaps, and question marks left within my belief system. They are constantly ignored, pushed out of sight, and out of mind. But I know that if I really want to get to know God, I must break away from this childish faith. The truth is, it's easy to believe. The challenge is knowing why you believe. As a 17-year-old, I realize I have so much time to figure these things out. I still have a lifetime of experiences, and especially college coming up, to live out, and I am definitely not pressuring myself to find all of the answers today. But as a young person developing my belief system, I think it's important for me to honor my curiosities and leave room for ambiguity. I challenge myself, as I challenge all of you, to take the time to slow down, focus, and really 
take time to think about my ambiguous beliefs, even though it's uncomfortable. I also want to carve out time to address these questions not only at church camp, but in my daily life. For church camp only lasts so long, and that is the only way that I will see true spiritual growth. Next year, I will be heading off to college. And before you all ask, no, I don't know where I'm going yet. But I'm prepared for a whirlwind of change and growth. Just like my journey of faith, I know that this year of transition will be uncomfortable. I'll certainly miss the warm smiles of too many familiar faces in this room. However, with the experience that comes with this uncomfortable change, I know that I will grow spiritually and continue to ask myself the hard questions, even when I get too busy. It is the out of my comfort zone, uncomfortable change that will cause me to endure, adapt, and grow in a new environment. I know that no matter how uncomfortable the journey, God will be growing with me. Good morning, church. My name is Nolan McDonald, and I am a senior at Centennial High School. I'd say it's still the beginning of the new year, but late enough to start up any awkward conversations with others about whether or not they're still sticking to their New Year's resolutions. Going to the gym seems to be the most common one that I hear about, and by that, I don't mean I oppose it. Whoever dedicates time to the gym each day has nothing but support from me. I struggle enough already with having to get up at 6 a.m. for track practice, and as a runner, finding time to add weight training to my schedule is even more difficult. Regardless of what fun things I decide to torture myself with, if it will help me become better, I'll try my best to endure it. I don't always want to face difficulty, but a positive outcome is what I strive for, whether it will help me to grow stronger as an athlete or in my faith. Being okay with getting out of your comfort zone is important for growth in general, but more specifically, being able to ask uncomfortable questions about your faith will allow you to go closer to God and have a better understanding of your relationship with Him. So like I said, 6 a.m. practice almost kills me every morning, and as my season goes on, it's not like it gets better either. In fact, it gets worse. Getting out of my warm bed, which is my literal comfort zone, is the hardest part sometimes, and it's in those moments when it's really easy to throw all my goals out the window. Sometimes I've tried going with the flow, just thinking that I'm doing the right thing because working hard is what will make me better, right? Well, not always. Things like injuries happen, or you hit a plateau, and you might wonder why you're not getting any better, even though you're putting in the work. You might be like me thinking, well, I got out of my comfort zone, so what am I doing wrong? But there's more to it than that. Getting out of your comfort zone also involves being able to question what's best for you, instead of conforming to what others around you are saying. If you're an average runner, but you're deciding to go run with people way faster than you for an entire eight mile long run, all you're doing is hurting yourself and not actually getting anything accomplished. Instead, take the time to acknowledge the fact that what you need to become better can be vastly different from what someone else needs, and use that to start your own journey to attaining the best version of yourself. This same lesson can be applied to our faith as well. If I asked you all how comfortable you are with your faith, what would you say? For anyone who believes they're in a pretty good spot in their faith journey, I have this question for you. How often do you take your faith to the gym? That might sound weird, but what I mean is, how willing are you to take your faith out of its comfort zone? In what ways can you test your faith? How willing are you to confront God about any uncomfortable questions or doubts that you might have? No matter how satisfied you are with your progress and your journey of faith, there's always more to learn. And the best way to build upon that is to not be afraid to face the difficult topics that you might feel better off avoiding. So let's say you're going through a hard time, but you've heard people tell you before to just trust God and put faith in him because he'll sort it all out. But in times of uncertainty, sometimes questioning God can be more effective than just asking for his guidance, and it can be a stronger way to build your faith. It might not feel like the right thing to do. After all, questioning a God who knows everything can appear pretty bold, which is why some don't feel comfortable doing so. However, when we experience difficulty and go to God for support, Instead of asking him for a reason for putting us through these experiences, ask him how we can learn from them and try to see what opportunities they present. It is by actively witnessing God's response to our doubts about his power and grace 
that our faith grows even stronger. Sure, it's not an easy process, but it's one that will definitely benefit you if you're willing to get out of your comfort zone with God. In his book, Distracted, the author Bob Goff says this, if you've got certain things about your faith, you can't out in confusion by shrugging your shoulders and walking away from the thoughts and questions. Instead, get real with the questions and doubts that you have. Stop pretending you don't have any. Rather, bring them to Jesus and ask for his help in sorting them out. Later on in the book, he also writes, if your faith is important to you, are you seeking a genuine expression of it or simply admittance to a club? Even if everyone else seems to be perfectly fine with their faith, expressing your uncertainty will help you to grow in your own way. And it's not easy, but the payoff is what's worth it. Our scripture today mentions our problems and how they lead to endurance, and from endurance to character, and then to hope. I think of those words, endurance is the most important because it's in the middle. You must first experience going through your own problems, but with endurance, which in this case is the willingness to confront God about our doubts, we can come out the other end wiser and stronger in faith. So not all of us can go to the gym, which is fine because there are other ways of getting out of our comfort zone. With faith in particular, there are always more opportunities to grow closer to God, and some of them may not be easy, but those are the best ones. If you're starting to feel uncertain about your faith, or if you're feeling your faith journey slowing down, then my advice to you, take your faith to the gym. Hi, my name is Caroline Litke, and I'm a senior at Pasco High School. All of my life, I have lived in Fort Worth, Texas. All of my life, I have lived in the same house as both my parents. All of my life, I have been a Christian. Because I have been so blessed to have such a stable system of support, loved by two incredible parents, and surrounded by an encouraging community of faith, it has been easy for me to fall into a routine, to become stagnant in my journey of faith. In short, to become comfortable. However, this past year, I entered into a new stage of my life, one that is riddled with decisions both in my control and outside of my control. Since I have less than a year left in high school and will be starting college in the fall, although I'm not sure yet where I will attend, I'm currently in a transitional period of my life. This year, I have started the daunting tasks of navigating adulthood, applying to colleges, and researching different majors and paths of study. Throughout this process, I have had to heavily think about my future and where I want to be a year from now, five years from now, even 10 years from now. I've had to ask myself the questions, how far away am I willing to go to school? What size college is right for me? Which schools will best prepare me for success in my chosen career path? While these choices have provided me with a newfound sense of freedom and control, they have also created a new set of worries in my mind, many of them centered around the question, what if I don't pick the right school? In the midst of making these difficult decisions, it has also been easy for me to get overwhelmed and caught up by the fact that for the first time, it has been up to me to make the final call. While my parents, without a doubt, have been incredibly supportive throughout this process and have helped and guided me in any way possible, in the end, I must craft my own path and decide what I want my future to look like which, being completely honest, is just as terrifying as it is exciting. However, while it is easy for me to feel alone throughout this process, that is simply not the case. I am not doing this by myself because God is alongside me always and is making these decisions with me. One of the most meaningful things I have learned from these experiences I have mentioned earlier is the importance of embracing change by surrendering my worries to God. When I attempt to carry the weight of these worries by myself, I feel like I am suffocating. But by stopping and reflecting and then placing my faith in God, allowing him to help shoulder my fears with me, I am able to take a breath again and come up for fresh air. Through facing these challenges with God instead of by ourselves and by not letting our fears define us, our faith is strengthened as we learn to trust in God and his plan. These decisions, though they may seem difficult in the moment, allow us to truly reflect on ourselves and our relationship with God by pushing us to test our limits, consider risks, and step outside our comfort zones, which ultimately works to fulfill us more in the long run. 
Take COVID, for example. While the pandemic was a very difficult time period, filled with all sorts of challenges, there were also good things that came out of it. Specifically, one of COVID's blessings was that it caused me to have a greater appreciation for many of the little things I had previously taken for granted. So, even though in the moment the pandemic was challenging and disheartening, in the long run, it allowed us to adapt and change for the better. As one can see from these examples, it is during the uncomfortable, uncertain periods of our lives that we experience the most growth. As verses three through five in Romans five discuss, these trials and tribulations work to encourage and strengthen our faith, as well as provide us with the hope necessary to keep diving deeper in our journey of faith. Because of this, we must learn to be comfortable with the uncomfortable, because it is during these stages of life that our relationship with God is able to develop the most. Good morning, church. My name is Emerson Self, and in the upcoming fall, I plan to attend the University of Oklahoma. Boomer sooner. <laughs> All right. That's a little better than I was anticipating. I was expecting some horrible UT or OSU fans here. <laughs> Currently, I'm a senior at Christian Life Preparatory School. As most of you are probably unaware of the school, there are about 600 kids from K through 12th grade that attend here. From this school, I have had the amazing opportunity of getting an education that is intertwined with Christianity. But let me just say, and I know this may come as a shocker, but not all Christians agree on certain topics. <laughs> Within my school, there are the denominations of Baptist, Catholic, Calvinist, Presbyterian, non-denominational, Greek Orthodox, and about two sole outnumbered disciples of Christ, <laughs> which are my brother and I. As y'all can guess, my classmates and I have some very interesting, very uncomfortable conversations. Anyone who identifies with a religion at some point in their lives will probably encounter these conversations. Sometimes these conversations are civil, as we hope they are. But at times, our frustration, exhaustion, and pure, I'm right, attitude stumbles out. Most of the time, my classmates and I attempt, which is a loose term, to understand each other's positions. After all, we can't agree or disagree without first comprehending. After one of these in-depth study hall discussions, where somehow five other people decide to intrude with their thoughts and opinions, I usually drive home very frustrated. Obviously, by the time the 20 minute trip is over, I've convinced myself that my classmates' beliefs don't matter because disciples of Christ are always right. <laughs> but something to know about me is that I do not enjoy confrontation, with the exception of when my brother eats my leftover food. Having conversations about my beliefs gives me the image of a ridiculously cramped elevator. Everyone stands in weird angles, afraid to move or breathe, overwhelmed and utterly uncomfortable. However, these conversations always make me wonder why I am uncomfortable. What was I afraid to articulate? And what were my classmates orating that I disliked? Why do I believe something when the opposing side makes a legitimate argument? How can I be right and they also? I wish I could stand here and spout some objectively true answers, but I'm pretty positive I, like most of you, will never know the solutions to these inquiries. But one fact that I can proclaim is that through these uncomfortable, cramped situations, I actually become strengthened in my faith. I have the ability to gather many different perspectives on a topic and puzzle out how my beliefs relate to others. Sometimes my beliefs adjust and incorporate other ideas. Other times, my beliefs remain freely planted. But either way, my relationship with God becomes more solidified, and I am able to approach my new journey of college knowing just a little more about who I am and a little more about who I am called to be. 
The verse that we read today is one of my absolute favorites. No one enjoys going through difficulties, but sometimes we find God most in our sufferings. Maybe this is because Jesus suffered so much for us. He took our sins upon himself and had mercy and love on us while we sat and judged him. Maybe it's because we come to see during our struggles what truly matters to us in life. Our verse says not to just partake in our troubles, but to boast about them. We are called not to be ashamed or afraid of the uncomfortable. If we instead embrace the awkward conversations, we are imitating the Lord Jesus and growing growing closer to him. We are becoming athletes of Christ. Suffering, like athletics, produces endurance, meaning that we have to make the conscious decision to keep running despite the pain. Struggle builds character. It shapes us to be who we are called to be. And the uncomfortable cultivates hope, which pushes us past the finish line. All of these strengthen our faith and remind us that Christ is always running alongside with us. So the next time that we find ourselves on an overcrowded, claustrophobic elevator or encounter another uncomfortable journey, let us remember to be present and boast in it. Thank you.